Hey guys, and welcome back to Prisoners of Hope. I just want to continue from where I left off the last time after I surrendered everything to Jesus, my marriage, my cheating husband. What happened next? Did things get easier for me and my husband? Um, no, we didn't. Actually, it got worse, a lot worse before it got better. And the more I surrendered it to God and the more I read my Bible and the closer I got to Jesus, the more my husband attacked me. And it was difficult because I was not sure how to fight back. And this is how the Word of God helped me. You know, I needed to establish my legal grounds in what the Word of God was speaking over my life and not what my situation looked like and what, not what my husband said about me. And it was at this moment when I was asking God to punish my husband and to bring this lost prodigal back home. I realized that, you know, that I was being attacked. That not only my marriage was being attacked, but everything that my husband said about me, everything that people said about me, it was a direct um, offense to who I was as a person, you know, and it, it affected me and it contaminated my heart. And for a long time, you know, I, I believed that I was justifying my actions because I was trying to control my husband, but it was manipulation and that is not the ways of God. You know, I was not being a submissive wife or Proverbs woman. I was being the opposite of all of that and I did not reflect Jesus in my character, in my marriage, in my daily lifestyle. And so what was actually being accused today, you know, when I found out that I was praying for my husband and I wanted God to deal with him, that the fingers were all pointing to me. I was a bad person, they were accusing me. And this was, uh, you know, I realized that I was now believing these lies. For years, I actually did believe these lies. And that is why I pushed people away, you know, because people always made it like I was hard to love and I was a difficult person. So I just thought that, you know, this was the easiest for myself. And I didn't realize that when I erected up this wall around me and I pushed everybody away, including my husband, that today I was the only prisoner that I was the only one on the inside and I was trapped and I couldn't get out and I was lonely and I was depressed and I was miserable and I was losing this battle fighting it in the flesh you know I had to go back to the Word of God and the Word of God says we do not fight flesh and blood so I need to know that this was the enemy that he was doing this to me it wasn't my husband that we are still on the same team that he is not my enemy my husband was not my enemy and I needed to forgive him and I needed to claim his soul back for Jesus Christ. But I couldn't do that because I was lost. I was lost and I was believing this negative narrative over my life for years. And I didn't realize that I was living religiously. And I wasn't, I wasn't pleasing God by doing that. And I needed to change. When Satan, my accuser, came and he accused me of being a bad wife, all I could say to God was that I was guilty. But I heard you're a God of second chances and third chances. If you could please forgive me, I've made a mistake. I've learned my lesson and I want to change. So it was imperative at that moment that I knew that not only my husband was the problem, but if I had dealt with this properly, I wouldn't be in here years later, 10 years later, praying and crying for the same thing. You know, that I, that even though the enemy came with me with a strategy that I needed to know that God is the master strategist and that he would give me the strategy to fight this battle that he would equip me for this that my pain would not be for nothing you know and as I did this every day I realized that I needed to declare who I was in Christ and not who people said I was not who my husband said I was I was a nag I was a bad wife um, I was psycho, I was crazy, that's why he's leaving me, you know, because um, I dealt with everything wrong and I was always fighting and I disrespected him, I treated him like a dog and I treated him like a child and those were things that I needed to jot down and, 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 and take it to God and say, this is not who I want to be anymore, this is not who you created me to be, you do not create me to be a nag and a horrible wife that everybody is saying that I am today, I'm a bad mum, I've made bad choices and I deserve this, 
no, I don't deserve this. So I remembered that, um, you know, it's finished at the cross, that Jesus already died for my sins, that he rose on the third day. So the resurrected King lives in me. And I needed to stand up and wake up because I am resurrected. That even though my marriage seems like it was dying, that God could still resurrect this dead marriage. And it needed to start with me. I needed to stop believing the lies of the enemy. And in order to do that, I needed to replace my thoughts with what God said about me. Not what my past said about me, not what my sin said about me. Um, and this is where I established legal grounds. Fighting back with the word of God. Not fighting back in my anger and sinning in my anger anymore and manipulating the situation anymore. But now doing things God's way. And this is where I conquered. This is where I conquered the war within first. Because I was battling an identity crisis. I believe this is the way I had needed to be. This is the way I needed things to work in order to have a happy marriage. But I, I completely took God out of the equation. I took Jesus Christ out of the equation. And I wanted to do marriage alone. But when I fell apart and when I was lost, you know, this was a learning point for me. And this is where it matters because... I knew that I was a sinner as well, and I knew that I was not perfect, but I wanted God to give me another chance. And when I did that, things got easier for me. I started to behave differently towards my husband, not nagging and shouting and fighting as soon as he comes home, and ranting and raving and acting like a disgrace. But I started acting like God. You know, I started welcoming him back home with love. Uh, I I, when I phoned him, I prayed. When he came over, I prayed. So I allowed the Holy Spirit. I allowed the Holy Spirit to take over now, and not to walk in my flesh anymore. Because I knew that I was loved by Jesus, that I was blessed, that I was bought with a price, and that even though if my husband never loved me and if he never came back home, that it was okay. That Jesus Christ was more than enough for me, because I had came to that point that Jesus needed me to, to come to. The point where only he mattered, you know, where if I was all alone and I had nothing, that Jesus Christ was more than enough for me, that I knew who I was in Christ, that he would still turn this bad situation for my good, that I would still get a testimony, that his word would not come back void, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I needed to learn this from within first. I needed to act it out and apply the Word of God. Because the Word of God is alive and active. And I needed to be alive and active first in me, you know, and then in my marriage, and then in my husband. I needed my husband to see Jesus in me when he walks home. Not the devil. Not this woman that was arguing and fighting. And I needed him to be comfortable and happy at home. And that was my duty, you know. I needed to go back to what I needed to do, not what I wanted my husband to do. So this was a real, um, it was an awesome, it was an awesome season of transition for me, of finding out who I am in Christ first, so that I could be a better wife, and a better mom, and a better person, and a better servant to God as well. You know, and even though the, the Satan comes and he accuses us, the Bible says in Revelation 12, 10, that um, Satan accuses us day and night before God. But I also want you to remember that the next verse says in, in verse 11, that we overcome him with the blood of the Lamb and with the word of their testimonies. And the first testimony is the blood of Jesus. So I covered myself, my situation, my marriage with the blood of Jesus. And that is where I have established my victory. And guys, I hope that you can do the same for yourself to find your identity again in Christ and know that He loves you no matter what. And there's no pit so deep that He cannot take you out from. You can never be so lost that He cannot find you. Until next time, guys, stay blessed and walk in Christ and walk in your identity.